the original lens that was put in here was a quadriform lens. This is a biform lens, one light here and another light on the lower platform. But the quadriform had four tiers of light, two on the bottom and two up on top here, evenly divided. And um, the, the source of power was gas drawn from canal coal. Canal coal, when it was uh, converted into gas and the gas burned, gave off a very white light, which made it very good for burning in a lighthouse. Um, each burner, and there were four of them, had 108 fishtail jets of gas. So when all four tiers of light were lighted, that is 432 uh, jets of gas were burning. That made the galley head the biggest, the brightest, and the most expensive light in the world at that time. But what they were doing is looking for a source of light powerful enough to penetrate fog. And the gas was the best they ever achieved. But it was extremely expensive. There was a fella called Jonathan R. Wiggum. He was a Scottish man and a nephew of Edmondson and Company of London and Dublin. Edmondson put in the, um, the gas uh, works here. He also did the street lighting in Dublin. But when Edmondson died, Jonathan R. Wiggum took over the running of the firm. Um, Jonathan R. Wiggum invented a system where the light would extinguish itself and relight itself again. Uh, it meant that a ship would lose a flash every now and again, but the economy of it was um, it overrode everything. Uh, when a ship would take its uh, bearings or count the amount of flashes, it would count a sequence of flashes over a long period of time until it got the proper sequence. If it missed the flash, it knew it had missed the flash. That system continued until 1907, from 1878 until 1907. In 1907, they threw out the gas works and put in the apparatus we're looking at now, which is a biform lens. That is, one light up here and another light below, and both of them burning at the same time. It was a paraffin vapor burning light they had in it. When this light was lighting, both tiers were burning at the same time. This light had a candle power of 362,000 candles. Um, the lens that you're looking at here are called a Fresnel or a Fresnel lens. And if you were to take the curvature of glass going round for magnification, that would have to come out as well. Now what Fresnel did was he cut that glass into the rings and set them back into each other and he magically did not lose any of the magnification power of the lens. So from the early 1800s, uh, he fought against Napoleon, he was imprisoned, he was a man of poor health. But from that period on, they were now able to make a lightweight lens to revolve around a fixed light. The lens that are here revolving are floating in a bath of mercury. Once they're underway, it requires very little energy to rotate them. So it was possible to rotate these lens by a clockwork, a weight-driven clockwork motor. All we had to do was govern the speed of the weight going down through the lighthouse so as to give 20 seconds into a revolution. There are five lenses in it, so that is five flashes every 20 seconds, and that's the character of Galley Head. Um, it's a two-tier light. The center, um, the, the, or the prisms here on top, in between and on the bottom, they're called catadioptric prisms, and they will catch any light that is shining up, and they bend it out straight. So what shone out of this lighthouse was a pillar of light about 15 feet high by two and a half feet wide. A massive, big, tall, long beam of light, and a big wide one. 
1969, the light was electrified. They did away with the oil and put in a 3,500 watt bulb and increased the candle power from 362,000 candles up to 2,800,000. So they were able to make the lower section redundant. And there's enough power now comes out of the top of this to drive that light 50 miles out to sea. It's the Earth's curvature is beating us at 30 miles. So they have reached their maximum with it. So there you go.